was expecting. Welcome back to Recappy. Today we are going to recap a 2017 thriller horror movie titled Gerald's Game. During foreplay, a lady accidentally murders her spouse. They travel to an isolated location in an attempt to rekindle their sputtering relationship. She becomes delirious after being handcuffed to the bed. But before we begin, please consider subscribing to this channel. Now without wasting any further time, let's begin shall we? Our film begins with a couple, Jess and Gerald, preparing their suitcases for a weekend getaway to their lake property. Despite the fact that everything appears to be going smoothly, Jess observes a dog standing in the center of the road, and Gerald pulls over just in time to avoid hitting him. Despite this, Gerald seems unmoved by the spectacle. He then drives onto the farm residence, where Jess inquires about keeping the dog. Regrettably, he refuses. Jess and Gerald come a little while later, and Jess immediately begins frying some meat for the stray dog they found. Fortunately, the dog detects the scent of food and follows it to her. Gerald, on the other hand, comes in on her as she's preparing to feed the dog. He then scolds her for wasting their meal on a stray dog, telling her that this meat costs $200 per pound. However, he advises her to leave the meat for it because she cooked it. After that, Jess is waiting for Gerald in the bedroom when he emerges with a set of handcuffs. She is worried when she notices that Gerald has used Viagra to improve his performance. She is uncomfortable with the thought of being restrained, but she goes along with it to keep him pleased. She has the impression that Gerald is moving in a non-consensual route after a bit of fast foreplay. Jess is terrified and feels uneasy as she yells at him to uncuff her, causing him to lose his character. Despite his attempts to apologize, she reminds him that trying new things in the bedroom will not save their marriage from disintegration. He is relentless in his attempts to get her to submit to him. Jess, on the other hand, becomes enraged and headbutts him. Gerald begins to go into cardiac arrest a few seconds later as a result of the Viagra pill he took. Jess is terrified and shackled to the bed, and she has no idea what to do. She screams for him to wake up as soon as his body falls on top of her. She then tries to shove him off the bed, but it doesn't help Gerald, who is struggling to breathe. She notices he's seriously bleeding all over the floor when she does that. The realization that her husband is no longer alive dawns on her. Jess is on the edge of losing her mind when she hears someone entering the home through the gate. She expects to see one of her friends come to her aid, but instead she sees the stray dog she fed earlier roaming around the room. She stands helpless as she watches the dog inspect her husband's body. She yells at him to back off away from the dead till he tries to lick Gerald's blood off the floor, but it doesn't deter him. Unfortunately, he takes a bite out of Gerald's arm, which Jess is forced to see while powerless to intervene. Her husband gets up from the floor to reprimand the dog for biting a part of his arm while she is screaming. She's terrified to discover that his body is still on the ground, and she's having hallucinations of him being alive. When he realizes this, his hallucination begins to chastise her for wasting time while Gerald is bleeding out. Despite the fact that she is hallucinating a version of herself encouraging her to try to break free from the handcuffs, she fails. Gerald's hallucination then advises her that if she doesn't eat or drink, she'll die soon enough. Gerald's hallucination places a cup of water on top of the shelf above her, which she notices. Because her arms are short and she can't hold the cup to her lips to drink, she fashions a straw out of the ticket from her nightgown. Jess is crashing and can't keep her eyes open, so she falls asleep owing to her high stress levels. She wakes up to the dog barking outside after a few hours. Despite seeing a man standing in the corner of the room, she quickly recognizes that he is nothing more than a hallucination. She then reminisces on her childhood and the day she spent with her family. Her childhood was very tranquil until her father assaulted her when she was younger while on a family trip to view the solar eclipse. Jess spirals even farther as a result of this recollection. Gerald's hallucination tries to terrify Jess by telling her that the mystery man she saw is the Moonlight Man, whose purpose it is to kill her and collect any jewels she owns. As a result, she yells at the hallucinations to stop bothering her. She remembers how her father influenced her into not telling her mother after a while. Unfortunately, she was more afraid of her mother's response if she told her what her father had done to her, so she went into his request. Jess is startled awake by the dog attempting to attack her while she is sleeping. Thankfully, she summons the courage to kick him away from her. Gerald's hallucination appears, clothed as the Moonlight Man, as if on cue, to tell her that death will come for her sooner or later. He then tells her that no one will ever know how she died, but she tries to block him out by going back into her past memories to find a way out. Jess has a dream later that night about the solar eclipse. She then confronts her inner child, who accuses her of abandoning her. 
All she tells her is that she needs to go back to that day and figure out how to get free of her handcuffs. She then recalls breaking a glass with her bare hands at the dinner table, and how the resulting blood could have helped her break free from the handcuffs. Gerald's hallucination is preventing her from acting out her conduct, but her own hallucination is telling her that she needs to act it out immediately because she's dehydrated. Jess reaches for the cup of water on the shelf and breaks it with her right hand as a last resort. She screams in agony as she cuts her hand in order to lubricate it. She tears the skin and flesh from it as she pulls it out of the handcuff, leaving only bones and nerves. Even as she retrieves her phone from the nightstand, she discovers that her battery has expired, prompting her to proceed to the toilet in search of the key to the other handcuff. She tries her hardest to bandage her hand now that she's free. She does, however, pass out owing to dehydration and blood loss. She wakes up under the bed later that night to discover the dog trying to attack her again because Gerald's body is starting to decompose. Then she hears the dog crying and fleeing, as if it is afraid of something. When she turns around, though, she sees the moonlight man standing in the corridor. She bravely approaches him to present him with her ring, and he surprised lets her go. She gets in the automobile because she has Gerald's car keys. But she drops out again, and when she wakes up, she's back in the middle of the solar eclipse, with the moonlight man in the backseat. She wakes up as she crashes into a tree, caught off guard. She spots a couple of police officers patrolling an area near her, despite her severe injuries. She honks her horn with the last of her might, hoping that their attention will be drawn to her vehicle accident. She drops out just as she gets out of the car due to massive bleeding as soon as they come sprinting towards her. Jess is recovering from her injuries and the death of her husband a few months later. Despite the fact that her hand is still mending slowly, she is doing considerably better than before. However, she continues to have dreams about the moonlight man and the day of the solar eclipse whenever she goes to sleep. Jess, on the other hand, strives to help others by establishing a foundation for child abuse. Until she reads in the newspaper one day that the moonlight man is a real person named Raymond. And the cops apprehended him for serial murders and other charges. Feeling safe, Jess resolves to attend his court hearing in order to confront him and put an end to the nightmares that plague her every night. Jess shows back a few days later to confront Raymond. He had some physical defects that made him appear to be a monster, yet he wasn't a hallucination all along, as she had assumed. She walks in, handcuffed and set to be tried in front of a court, and then she walks out as swiftly as she came. Jess then takes a big breath and heads back to her apartment. And this is where the movie ends.